In crime mapping, we often need to handle counts of crimes for areas, rather than working with the locations of individual crimes themselves. Now, this allows us to do things like calculate crime rates and compare crimes with other data that are only available for areas rather than individuals. But it does create new issues for us to consider. And one of those is the modifiable aerial units problem, or the MORP. And what this does is it reminds us that when we're studying an area, or when we're particularly when we're counting things in an area, the areas that we choose can influence the distribution of counts across different areas. And that means that the patterns that we see in crime or in anything else that we're counting or measuring for different areas obviously depends largely on the distribution of crime or whatever we're measuring but it also depends on the areas we choose. And so we need to choose areas carefully, and even then we need to remember that this problem can still exist. So take, for example, these crimes spread across an area. Well, it looks like the crimes are concentrated in some areas, but it's very difficult to tell that um, with any certainty on a, a dot map like this. So instead, if we look at the density, of, of dots, the density of this crime, we can see that there seem to be these two um, concentrations. But imagine we didn't have these individual locations for specific crimes. And instead what we had was just the counts of crimes in particular areas. So here I've used a, a grid of square cells and you can see the counts of crime in each cell in the grid. You can see that the grid cell with the highest number of crimes had 10 crimes occurring in it. But these aren't the only uh, areas that we could have chosen. There are lots of other areas, administrative and statistical areas, for example. One other way that we could have counted crimes is using a hexagonal grid. So you can see here again the count of crime in each grid cell, and you can see now the top grid cell has 14 crimes in it. Now the distribution of crimes is exactly the same in each case. But the counts of crimes are different because of the boundaries of the areas used. And we won't always have the choice of which area to use because we might be using crime data that's been provided to us as counts for particular areas like neighbourhoods or maybe individual cities if, if we're looking um, at a larger scale of analysis. So if we compare these two uh, different maps produced from the same data but using different grids, we can see that there's quite a lot of similarities. So these two areas of, of the highest concentration that we saw on the density map are both picked out in, the, in both grids. But there are also some differences lower down the, the, the concentration of, of crime, where we see that some cells are highlighted as having some crimes on one of the maps, but on the other map, there's no crime showing within that cell, and that's purely an artifact produced by the different boundaries and whether a crime falls on one side of the boundary or another. So that's the MORP. Even if we keep the data the same, the appearance of our maps can still change based on the areas we use to calculate statistics such as crime counts. Now the MORP isn't a problem we can solve, but it is something we should be aware of whenever we produce maps based on data for areas rather than point locations.